If armed attackers are determined to destroy the White House, they will not be able to get inside the building, as the windows are impenetrable. Even an attacker who recently attempted to shoot at the White House with a semi-automatic rifle has failed to break any windows. In addition to the windows, the perimeter of the White House is covered in infrared lasers, which can detect even the smallest threats. These lasers cover the sky, the ground, and the underground. Is the White House heavily protected? The White House has one of the most elaborate security systems in the world, ensuring the safety and security of the U.S. President and the First Family. For the safety of the Presidents of the United States of America, the security measures in place to protect the building have received attention from experts in the locksmithing industry. In 1978, a man named Anthony Henry breached the security of the White House. He used a knife that he had taken from a Bible to stab one officer in the face and stab another officer's arm. He was eventually arrested. The White House now limits tours. There was also heavily restricted airspace over the White House. There are lasers that identify any aircraft activity over the building. If needed, a fighter jet can be deployed in five minutes. Nonetheless, there is no guarantee that the president and his family will remain safe from terrorists. The Secret Service must be able to detect an attack in advance. There are strict document control processes in place at the White House. Most staff members are required to sign out records when moving or reviewing them. In addition, they must create a paper trail for any records they take from the White House. These measures are not only common sense, but they also help ensure that sensitive documents do not fall into the wrong hands. How many security guards guard the White House? There are thousands of security guards on the grounds of the White House. Secret Service agents and 1,300 uniformed guards are on duty around the clock. The White House has more than 10 guards on the roof. There are also agents assigned to foreign diplomatic missions. The White House also has a perimeter security system including infrared sensors and alarms. Security guards are assigned to three eight-hour shifts. Initially, the White House was protected by the police under the command of John Addison Porter. But after the assassination of President McKinley in 1901, the Secret Service was created. The Sundry Civil Expenses Act of 1907 provided funds for the Secret Service to protect the President and his family. In the early years, there was no permanent security force around the White House, but there were auxiliary guards to guard the President. There was a night watchman and day guard, and later a captain, who was responsible for keeping an eye on the President and anyone calling the White House. The Secret Service has had some controversial episodes in recent years. One involved a man who jumped a fence and walked through the North Portico doors of the White House with a three-and-a-half-inch folding knife. This led to federal indictments and a 17-month prison sentence. Afterward, Pearson resigned as Secret Service Director, and Joseph Clancy was appointed Interim Director. Does the White House have snipers? Hundreds of Secret Service agents are always on guard, including snipers, and President Baritzko Obama is no exception. The President's Protection Team has trained snipers to strike targets dead on and put themselves in harm's way. Travis Taylor, one of the team's cower snipers, spent a decade on the force. The snipers are armed with high-powered assault rifles. Secret Service counter-sniper teams have very demanding physical requirements. 
They must be able to cover a distance of over a mile and a half within nine minutes and be strong and agile enough to fire weapons under duress. However, despite their strict training and demanding job duties, Secret Service agents are unlikely to change their standards regardless of which administration they work for. The White House security system is thorough and covers every square inch of the building. It employs a special sniper team called the Secret Service Counter Sniper Team, which uses specially built weapons and equipment to prevent long-range threats to the President and the First Family. It also uses infrared cameras and radar on the roof to help detect intruders. The building is surrounded by a perimeter of missile batteries. The White House also has a high-tech laser system that can detect threats a mile away. This system also helps alert the other missile systems. Is there a bunker under the White House? The White House bunker is a place where the President and other senior members of the administration take refuge in case of emergencies. These rooms are located underneath the east wing of the White House. They were built in the 1940s and expanded under President Truman. However, they were rarely used until the 9-11 attacks. In the memoir of former First Lady Laura Bush, she described being hustled into the bunker after an airliner hijacked her plane. One of the White House underground pathways connects the building to the Treasury Department, which is just two blocks away. The tunnel, which is seven feet high and ten feet wide, was built following the attacks on Pearl Harbor. In the event of a bomb attack, the President and his family can easily and safely retreat to the underground bunker. During the recent presidential visit, Secret Service agents rushed President Donald Trump to the bunker, where he spent about an hour. Protesters had gathered outside the executive mansion and thrown rocks at police barricades. Trump explained his visit as an inspection. During the trip, Melania Trump and Barron Trump were also taken to the bunker. The president's secret bunker is located beneath the east wing of the White House. It is also called the Presidential Emergency Operations Center POC and has a secret tunnel system. Since the terror attacks of 9-11, the Presidential Emergency Operations Center has been used to protect the president and his family during crises. How much does the head of security in the White House make? For the past eight years, the Secret Service has been responsible for protecting the first family from danger. These costs are much higher than those of President Obama, who had his Secret Service officers costing nearly $97 million over eight years. Those costs aren't even including the cost of operating Air Force One. The plane alone costs $142,380 an hour. While the benefits aren't exclusively for the president, many of them are practical and security related. However, the pressure of the job dulls the enjoyment of some of these things. Nonetheless, they are a nice fantasy to think about, especially if you're dealing with such a high pressure job. The Secret Service and the Embassy are also responsible for some of the costs. The Trump administration's frequent travel has caused the costs of security in both cities to rise. New York City alone spends nearly $100,000 a day protecting the president and his family. This number jumps to $300,000 if the president is in town. What happens if the White House is attacked? It depends on the attackers and how they attack. A small group of fence jumpers could overwhelm the uniformed officers. The attack could also include mortars, which would do considerable damage. The attack plan called for a commando team of 12 men to enter the White House. Once inside the building, the attackers would fight their way to the Oval Office. The goal would be to force the president to deliver a live statement. A simulated attack on the White House is a good way to prepare for an attack. There are also numerous security precautions in place. These precautions help make sure that the president is safe. 
The White House is one of the most well-protected buildings in the world, but the danger is real. A terrorist attack on the White House could cause chaos and devastation. The White House has been attacked before by planes. There were attacks in 1994 and 9-11. Today, the White House is protected by NASA MS defense systems. They are capable of intercepting aircraft at ranges of 15 to 25 kilometers. The missiles could deliver the payload in a head-on collision. Interestingly, the Olympus has fallen bomber would not have been able to get into the country because of rules imposed by the FAS. These rules would have prevented the plane from reaching the White House. 